did you make it all the way from there to here so quickly? Because television is a magical thing. It uh, is. Listen, let's talk about this issue that we spoke about at length yesterday. The fate of Jean Moss Park and the softball diamonds there. Marisa Barry Mendez joins us now. Good morning, Marisa. Good morning. Uh, thanks for joining us all here. Yeah. I, I wanted... Things got heated here yesterday. Oh, I noticed. I noticed. Yeah, I noticed. And, yeah. and you know what? It wasn't just here. It seemed like for some reason this issue has taken off in all media. Yeah. Why don't you tell me why are you know why are you so upset about what the city has done? Uh, I think we're really upset because uh, we have a really unique community that has existed for five decades. Um, it's home to a lot of people. It's a super multicultural, really diverse community. I think one of the only really integrated communities in Montreal, people from all walks of life, um, all different ling linguistic backgrounds and cultural backgrounds. And we feel like this kind of community should be fostered by mm -hmm. the city and it should be supported. And we're really upset that we're getting displaced. So, Marisa, well, sorry, oh, sorry, go ahead. I, I was gonna say, why do you think you weren't given any notice on this? I mean, it's anybody's guess. Um, I, I personally feel like uh, folks are aware that we're able to mobilize. Last year, we really mobilized an yeah. active campaign huh. in order to oppose um, the elimination of our field. And so I, I feel like that came into play in the fact that we were told, and five days later, the field was gone. So, you know, we reached out here on the show to uh, Proche de Montréal yesterday. We got a response from Alex Norris, and, you know, it was a very lengthy response. And, and in it, there was the details. They mentioned, you know, there could be accidents, the ball, someone, someone did get hit, they say. Uh, they sued the city, managed uh, to, to win. There was a settlement, uh, uh, which, by the way, reminder, it is quite difficult to sue the city. So what do you make of that? They're saying, you know, it's too dangerous, although it has been around for 50 years. So where... In between public safety and your right to play softball, does the diamond, should the diamond exist? Yeah, there's a lot of pieces here. I mean, they told us about this ballistics report. Um, we, we feel that it's exaggerated. We weren't able to obtain a copy, so it's Aha. difficult to really judge. We were told that we needed to file an access to information request, which we've done, but who knows how long it'll take to get that report. Uh, the bottom line is, in the past five decades, there's been one injury. Um, we know that this is not a unique risk. I yeah. think you were talking about this yeah. yesterday. Where, where ball sports are played, there are balls flying around. Yeah. Like there's, yeah. there's a small risk. Everybody understands that. Uh, we think it's been exaggerated. And we care about safety. We, we would love to have a safer field, better fencing. Uh, we would love to work with the city on making the space safer. Well, that's what's interesting here, Marisa, because, you know, a lot of people talked about it yesterday and brought up the fact, you know, probably a cheaper solution would perhaps be putting up netting and, as you said, even better fencing rather than bulldozing the entire thing. And I, I imagine they're going to put, you know, sod down. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, thoughts on that? I mean, why wasn't there a consultation? There's no public consultation. Here's, you know, Projet Montréal who talked about transparency, the importance of public, you know, consultations, and there is none. That's right. I mean, I think we really expected more transparency because last year we got people on side. We felt like we kind of went through all the all the channels that you're supposed to go through. And so it was really shocking to just hear after after promises and, you know, we followed up. We were really diligent about this. And then suddenly just hearing, nope, sorry, it's too unsafe. Um, we're going to abolish your field. When you start off this interview, you mentioned community. You mentioned how everyone was brought mm -hmm. together. Yesterday, on 98.5 on Paul Arcon's show in the morning, uh, Luke Fernandez, there you see him there a year ago throwing out a pitch, right, in one of your mm -hmm, games. Mm -hmm. Luke Fernandez said that basically this is a group of Anglophones of a certain age. This one, I'm, I'm quoting this. A group of Anglophones of a certain age, they like to make their hot dogs. How does comments like that make you feel? I mean, it's just completely inaccurate. It's, it, it's, it feels really condescending. Uh, this is an ultra-diverse community. Like, how do all the Francophones and Latinos and newcomers who are part of this community feel when they hear him and talking about... And also, even, let's just say, pretend it was just Anglophones. Like, that's okay. Like, right. people can... Yeah. Right? I mean... Yeah. What's wrong with making hot yeah. dogs? Hey, I mean, Luke. this is a great yeah. community hey, event. Hey, Mr. Ferrandez. Yeah. Okay? Go know. on. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Marissa, did, can I ask you, did you vote for Project Montreal in November? I did. And in light of what's happened and the sort of renege on the promise, are you rethinking that? I mean, of course. Of course, mm -hmm. right? And what are the thoughts of the people around in your community when they're, and, and Monday night when you go to that meeting? Yeah, I mean, I think people are really surprised. That, you know, you showed the picture. Um, the, the borough mayor, he uh, positioned himself as an ally last year when, when we were mobilizing. And so I think that people definitely feel really betrayed. I, I want to get, I, I know we're running out of time, but just gentrification has been brought up mm -hmm. uh, in, in this conversation. 
Where does that come into play? I mean, I think people people in the community have been asking a lot of questions about this. You know, we're, we feel like the most important thing is preserving and fostering this amazing, unique, integrated community. And so the fact that we're being wiped out and that we're, we're not being collaborated with in order to, to prioritize us having that space makes us feel like maybe we don't, this super diverse community doesn't fit into the vision of the administration. Listen, Teresa, so. thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. We're going to continue to try to get Mr. Fernandez on the show and we'll, we'll, we'll let you know <laughs> how you. that goes.